You've probably seen that counter effect in a lot of videos. It's a great way for you to display dynamically any value on screen. Today I'm going to show you how to create that from scratch inside of DaVinci Resolve. So you can display anything from monetary value, view count, percentages and any other value you can think of. In this video, I'll go over how to create a counter from scratch, how to use expressions and custom tools to make your life easier and finally how you can save it for future use. And make sure to stick until the end because I'll share with you a custom tool I've created to make it incredibly easy to use this counter effect. With that being said, let's jump right into it. All right, so in DaVinci Resolve right now we're on the edit page, we're gonna start by going over to effect, title, and then here we're gonna drag a text plus in our timeline. We're just gonna use that text plus to create the base of our contour rather than going to fusion. That way, when we'll save it to our power bin later on, we'll be able to have a lot of control very neatly organized directly in the inspector rather than exporting a macro. But for now, we're gonna go over to Fusion to create our counter. So I'm gonna click on that Fusion icon right there, which lead us to Fusion. And now we're gonna start to make our modification. So I'm gonna start here by creating a few control by right-clicking on template. And then I'm just gonna scroll down to edit control, which is gonna prompt open that window. I'm gonna just stretch it a little bit so we can see what we're doing. And then here, we're gonna create a few new controls. Those controls are gonna be added right here in the inspector and gonna allow us to create that counter by linking them with different expression. So the first control that I want to create is gonna be the number counter. So I'm gonna just here write number counter or any other thing that you wish to write um, to refer to that parameter. So here I'm going to leave it as a number. Here we're just going to leave it as user. Those pages are referring to each of the icon that you're seeing right there. So here we have user, common, image, layout, shading, text, transform. As you can see, those are matching that. I'm going to leave it to user. That's just going to create a new tab and that way it'll be easy to refer to that tab. But if you wish to have it appearing, for example, here in text at the end of the text tab, you can just select text if you want. So we're gonna leave it as user here in default. I'm gonna select integer that gonna allow me to not have the decimal being displayed and basically rounding up the numbers. Then the range, we're gonna select zero to whatever range you want for your counter. So me, I'm gonna just choose as uh, high as possible. So we can know a billion maybe. And then we're gonna select slider control. Then we're just gonna select okay. And as you can see here, there is a new user tab and that just created that control right there, that display number. But it's not yet linked to our text. We're gonna do that later on with an expression. Right now, I'm just gonna create another parameter by going over to edit control. We're gonna call it prefix. We're gonna select text this time. And then here, I'm gonna do a text edit control. We're gonna make it only one line because we're not gonna need to have a big text box. And then we're gonna select okay. And as you can see, that's created a simple text box right there. Now we're gonna just do that for the suffix. So edit control, and then here we're gonna write suffix, same thing, select text, text edit control, and then one line. Now we've basically created all the parameter we need. These number counts are gonna allow us to adjust the animation of all number. And this prefix gonna allow us to add a sign at the beginning of our counter and the suffix at the end of our counter if we need. So right now, just so we can see what we're doing, I'm just gonna add a minus on the prefix and then I'm gonna add a percentage on the suffix. And we're gonna link all those with an expression. To do that, I'm gonna go over to text. I'm gonna right click on my text. And then here, we're gonna select expression. Then here in expression, I'm gonna start by displaying first the prefix. So we're gonna write prefix dot value. And here there is the minus that is appearing. Then we're gonna do space dot dot. And we're gonna now enter our counter. So that's gonna be number counter. And now we have the number appearing. We're gonna do space dot dot. And then this time we're gonna do the suffix. So we're gonna write suffix dot value and now we have the percentage appearing as well 
it's very important that I respect the exact writing that I have. So in that case, for example, with the prefix, I need to have prefix with a capital P. If I don't have the prefix with a capital P, as you can see, that might just cause some issue. Like if I were to go back and try to make some change, as you can see, those changes are not going to be reflected because now uh, it doesn't point at the right place. You need to have the exact same name. So right now, if I make the change again, as you can see, prefix with a capital P. If we go to user this time and we try to add more stuff, as you can see now, it's been linked properly. And now what is display on screen react perfectly to all controls. So here we can adjust the number. We can adjust the prefix or the suffix. So we can add here, for example, a dollar sign. Uh, we can add whatever thing we want. For example, here, if we want to add uh, more number, um, we can do that right there. Let's say we want to have 35 and we want to have an animation only um, on the first number. We can do that right there by just displaying then 00, zero um, comma 00. zero. And that way, when we're going to make an animation, only the beginning number will be animated and those will not be animated. So there is a lot of combination that you can do with those. Now, obviously that's gonna be reacting properly to any other change that you want to do here. So if you want to increase the size, for example, if you want to change the font, you can do that right there. So here, we're just gonna do Montserrat black, for example. You can also make some change here in the shading. Uh, if you want to have a shadow, if you want to have, for example, a background here, we're gonna do blue border. We're gonna here increase a bit the horizontal. We're gonna make rounded corner. And now we do have a background. So I'm gonna change the color of that background to black. And that background will now automatically adapt to whatever value is displayed on screen. So you can do that for a background. You can do that for an outline. Here, if you wish to go to shading again, just select the border outline. And then here, instead of having character, you can just select text and you can adjust the horizontal value. Here, we're just gonna change the color to white this time. And now we have an outline. So the shading tab is very helpful to help you uh, design the exact style that you want for your content or any other text for that matter. All right, so now let's jump into the animation. We're just gonna do something simple because the goal of the video was mostly to show you how to create those custom parameter right here. So I have a video that is a bit more in depth into how to animate and play around here with the spline and, and the keyframe editor. Right now, we are just gonna do a simple animation, probably just a size and opacity. So to do that, I'm gonna go over here to text and then we're gonna make an animation that's about one second on 25 frame. So I'm gonna go to the 25th frame. Then here in layout, drop a keyframe on the size. Then I'm gonna go over to shading and drop a keyframe on the opacity at one. Then we're gonna go down to zero and we're gonna decrease the opacity to zero. And we're gonna go over to layout and we're gonna decrease uh, here the size to about maybe 0.6. Now we have a simple animation coming in, as you can see, but it's linear. We're just gonna smooth that out by going over to the spline editor. Here, I'm gonna click zoom to fit to see on my point. I'm then gonna select everything and I'm gonna hit S on my keyboard. And that's already gonna smooth out the curve, as you can see. Now I'm gonna hit command T on my keyboard to bring the ease in and ease out. And I'm gonna increase the ease out at about 85. And now we have an animation that is a lot smoother in my opinion. Now we're gonna create our counter animation. It's very, very simple. All we have to do is going over to users and this time we just uh, gonna keyframe the number that we want to be displayed. In this case, I'm gonna keyframe it slightly longer than one second. So we're gonna do, let's say 35. I'm gonna drop a keyframe here at 35 and then I'm gonna go over to frame zero. And then here, let's say we're gonna start from five uh, million, for example. And that's gonna count from five million to 35 million. So now if we play it, as you can see, we get that counter ranging from five to 35. You can then always change those value later on. So for example, here, instead of having the suffix, we're just gonna delete that suffix. We're gonna put the value here at, let's say 25,000. And then here, I'm gonna go to zero and we're gonna start from zero. And now we have the counter counting from zero to 
25,000. So you can just play around with those to just get what you need. Then lastly, if you want to save that title, you can always go to edit page and save it to your power bins. You will find your power bins here in the media pool right there under power bins. If that doesn't appear, you can always go to that menu and select show power bins and it should appear right now. As you can see, if I select it, it's bringing the power bin. Now in the power bin, you can create a folder if you want uh, called, I don't know, animations and then you can save whatever you've created directly to the power bins. Now, whenever you need it, so here I'm just gonna rename it counter, so that's just easy to recognize. And whenever I need it, I can then drag it directly here to the timeline. And as you can see, I have everything right there and I can make my modification pretty easily here in user. Uh, I can, you know, remove the prefix. I can add a suffix instead. Um, etc. So you can then use those principles also that I shared with you uh, to create your own custom tools for the specific needs that you have. Now obviously it will require a bit more work to make it fully functional um, and easier to use in the future. For example right now we haven't created an animation out. You could technically just drag that and have here a simple opacity animation but that might not be ideal. Um, you can do it yourself by just replicating what we've done here at the beginning but here same there is just a small issue is that you will have to be exactly on the keyframe if you want to change the value um, otherwise you know it will just create another keyframe point and that's just uh, gonna mess up with your animation so that's great that's working but that's not ideal that's why i've created a free macro tool that you can use it's in all free starter pack you can download it with the link in the description below and basically we've made it very easy for you to use it in the future so here if you search for counter in all free start pack now you can bring that counter tool right there and now we can just make so many changes very easily you have the starting number directly here you get the final number you get different kind of animation you can choose from you can adjust here the text you can remove the text above there is just a lot of different things um, that you can do directly from there the shading as well as i showed you earlier uh, you know adjusting for example here a background or an outline you can do that directly from the edit page as well and it will retain the animation in and the animation out i've made a full video about this tool i will link to it in the description below and i have also a video where i'm explaining how to do a counter with more complex animation so i will link to that as well anyway i hope this video was helpful please don't forget to like and subscribe let me know in the comment what kind of video you like to see next and i'll see you in the next one bye Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates built only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videodetailstudio.com.